Hello friends, this video on carbon and its compound part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 8. Compounds of carbon are called organic compounds. Please note, the compounds of carbon are called organic compounds. For example, CH4 is methane, we'll learn all these things. C2S6, ethane, carbon dioxide. All these are called organic compounds. Any compound of carbon, anything which has carbon are called organic compounds. What are organic compounds? Organic compounds are nothing but my compounds of carbon with covalent bond. Please note, it has to has covalent bond. Example, CH4, C2H6, right? Please note, oxides, carbonates, hydrogen carbonates are carbon compounds but they are not, they are not carbon, uh, organic compounds. For example, you talk about CO2, right? This guy is a carbon compound, but this guy is not an organic compound. Please note, they are inorganic compounds. You will say that CO2 has a covalent bond, right? But carbon oxides, Carbonates and hydrogen carbons are not organic compounds. Please note, they are not organic compounds. They are separate. They are inorganic compounds. Other forms of carbon, they usually call it organic compounds. And you must be wondering, why this word organic, organic, right? Organic means something nature. Why this word nature is linked to a carbon compounds, right? So we'll, we'll study that also, right? Before knowing that, I'll give you a fact that there are more than 5 million organic compounds. So I told that carbon forms a chain, branch chains, right, a cyclic chain, something like this. It can form a branch, it can form a cycle, it can form a long chain. And with these different kinds of chains, we have more than 5 million organic compounds. Now let me tell you why it is called organic, because there's a history behind this. Earlier, these will assume that these compounds were extracted from natural substances and it was thought that all the organic compounds are natural compounds and they are extracted from natural substances. Only in 1828, this guy Fritz Wohler, he disproved this by preparing urea, that is an organic compound, from ammonia cyanate in the lab. So this guy prepared this compound in the lab. So early it was told that this guy all the carbon compounds are natural forming. They has to be, uh, it, it, I mean, if most of these are natural forming today also. And that's why the name organic came. But they, this was proved in 1828 when this guy scientist uh, created this organic compound in, in the lab itself. But still the name continued and still we call it organic compound. I hope you understand this. This guy is called organic compound because of the history behind it. Early it was assumed that it is all uh, extracted from the natural substances, organ, organic substances and it was called organic compound, which was disproved. So this definition is no longer true, but in history this definition was true, that is before 1828, this definition was true and this name was coined that time and we still use that name. Correct. And please note, oxides of carbon, carbonates and hydrogen carbonate, they are not organic compounds. We have already done this, but let's do it once again. What are the reasons for a large number of organic compounds? So there are two reasons. One was the catenation, that is self-linking, and the other is the tetra balance. So let's study this tetra balance. Carbon has a valency of four, right? It is capable of bonding with four other atoms of carbon or any other monovalent element. So for example, chlorine is monovalent, iodine, right? They are all monovalent elements. So carbon has a tendency to form a bond with carbon or chlorine or with iodine. And it can do with four others. For example, one carbon can form a bond with four carbon or four chlorine, right? Or one carbon, one chlorine, or two car three carbon, one chlorine, like that. So it can form pair in the uh, assorted way also, full chlorine, full carbon or mix of chlorine carbon. So it can do that. So it can, is capable of forming bond with four other atoms. 
carbon compounds of carbon are formed with oxygen hydrogen nitrogen sulfur chlorine and many other elements to give rise to compound which has specific properties and which depends on other element for example when it forms a bond with oxygen it it, it creates a compound which where the, with the property of which is depend more on oxygen than carbon when it forms a compound with hydrogen it uh, it creates a compound which uh, has property that is dependent on hydrogen so similar to this so the point here is the compounds which are formed from carbon it, it, it mixes with these uh, elements it has different properties and these properties depend on the these elements carbon is very strong in making covalent compounds and they are exceptionally stable. The carbon compounds are very, very, very stable. One reason why it is stable is because a carbon bond is very small in size. Right? And that's why the bonds are strong. Because the size is small, it can hold the shared pair of electrons strongly. Please note, shared pair of electrons can be held strongly because of the small size. And the bonds which are formed by the elements of the larger atoms, they are much weaker. For example, sulfur also is a little weaker. Carbon is small size, so it is stronger bond. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.